Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today, something a little bit different. We're going to try and make some money out of this old AMD FX8350. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so this is the uh, wife's old computer, just recently upgraded. So I'm going to try and uh, recycle this in some way. So obviously the best way is to try and sell it. Sell it on, make some money, put it towards the next build. Unfortunately, older PCs these days aren't worth a great deal. So you have to spend a little bit of time and effort trying to tart it up a little bit, making it look nice so that people actually want to buy it. Now I've already taken some pictures of this and posted it on Facebook on the local groups to see if there's any interest. Now, a few people have been interested, but nothing, nothing concrete yet. So. I thought maybe I should take it apart, give it a clean, and see what I can do to make it look a little bit more presentable. Now, this is the Antec 902 case, or 902, or 900 version 2, whichever way you want to look at it. Now, this case is a pretty old case. They've been around since probably 2007, 2008, so it's the best part of a 10-year-old design. Now, it was groundbreaking when it came out. Ventilated front, dual fans with fan controller, top 200mm uh, fan, all of it in a nice tower, nice chassis, lots of flexibility, modular bits and pieces so you can move things around, really great. But it doesn't have a lot of things that modern PC chassis have, such as decent cable management and flexible mounting options for the PSU. So I'll spin it around so you can see what it's like. So in the front, you've got two 120mm fans, both with fan controllers, nice touch. Don't have that on modern computers these days. Generally, it's all done by PWM on the board, but uh, for me, this is always really nice. You could turn them up, turn them down whenever you want to when gaming. Great stuff. Uh, fully meshed front, pretty much, apart from a couple of little uh, sound deadening pads behind there. But again, lots of airflow, fantastic. Coming around to the side, you've got a partial transparent window and another mesh and another fan option. Now, inside the case, not very pretty unfortunately. I'll take the sides off and you can see. So inside the chassis, what have we got? Well, we've got a pretty solid front mounting system, pretty much similar to the Fractal Design uh, R6, I think, or R4. One of the Fractal series anyway, that sort of standard plate at the front. Uh, you've got power supply mounting option at the base, which is always a good thing rather than the top. But unfortunately, you can only mount it with the fan facing upwards, which isn't ideal. Especially when it comes to uh, older power supplies that aren't modular, it does reduce some of the length of the cables. So you can't reach things like the top EPS connector, which is why this cable is hanging out in front, and certain other things like the graphics card. It would be nice to route the cable behind the motherboard, then bring it back out through the cable management hole and in there. But unfortunately, because the power supply is orientation, you can't do it, so you have to have all this mess down here and it's pretty unsightly and doesn't look great. And for prospective buyers, they're expecting to see something nice and shiny and cable managed and pretty much perfect, but for not a lot of money. So, what we're going to do? Well, cooling we've got covered. We've got the Cooler Master cooler on there, which is going to keep the FX8350 nice and cool, even though it is uh, somewhat of a nuclear furnace of a processor. The Zoltac GTX 780 graphics card, again, very similar deal very hot graphics card but still quite a good card even now in 2018 it will still play most of the latest games at lower resolutions and lower graphical settings so it's definitely got the makings of being a pretty decent little gaming pc for somebody but nobody seems to want it so like i said we've got the airflow covered so we've got two 120s at the front we've got a 120 at the back and a 200 at the top with another 120 on the cooler master cooler so there's plenty of airflow it's just this cable management is just awful. So my plan is take it all apart, clean it all up, make it look nice and tidy and pr pristine inside. Going to cut a hole in the bottom basement and then going to mount the power supply the upside down. So the fan pulling air in from underneath and there's enough clearance underneath so it shouldn't be too restrictive. But we're going to cut some holes. I haven't got a 120mm hole cutter or even close. So it's going to be a little bit of a hack and slash job at the bottom but it will improve the look overall inside. I can always get a magnetic mounted filter for the bottom after to tidy it up if need be. Um, but we'll give it a go and see what it turns out like and uh, hopefully it looks really nice and uh, you guys will appreciate it. 
Some of the other things we're going to do as well is try and reduce some of the chrome on the show. So things like these chrome or whatever you want to call it, zinc screws. We're going to get rid of those and turn, chain those into black screws just to make it all look nice and uniform. Uh, we may well take the spray can out and give the Cooler Master 2 and 2 Evo a coat in a black paint just so it kind of reduces that, that glowing silvery chrome look and try and neutralize some of the brighter colors in there. So that is the plan. Don't know how it's going to go, but stick with us for the ride and we'll uh, see what happens. Next thing to do is take this apart and give it a good clean. Okay, so we've made a start and one of the things I've done, which is uh, a little bit of a nicer touch just to try and help sell this bad boy, is to add a USB 3 port and card reader on the front of the chassis. Now, the motherboard supports USB 3 natively, so it's got ports on the back and it's uh, you could use a pass-through to route through to the front, but that's a bit nasty and it looks horrible cable hanging out the back. So for the price of a USB 3 card reader, which costs less than £10 on Amazon, really good addition and it's going to make things a little bit easier for routing and cable management inside as well so we've done that we've given the whole thing a bit of a clean up given it a wash given it a bit of a bath a little bit of uh, detergent never goes amiss so it's all looking nice and clean and tidy and we've also taken outside and taken the uh the whole saw to it and we've made some room for the power supply to be mounted upside down now this isn't pretty i will warn you but I did try to cut the shape into my favorite chocolate bar, which is the Freddo. So, you'll understand. So, there it is. There's my little Freddo. So there's his eyes and there's his big smiley face. So, if you like Freddos, like I do, I'll cut one into the bottom of my case. But in all seriousness, this whole there, I could probably sort out the later date. I didn't have a 120 mil hole saw, so that was the best I could do. It's a little bit sharp around the edges, but we can uh, we can have a play with that at a later date. I'll probably put a magnetic cover over there just to filter out any dust and debris. But at the moment, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna let the power supply breathe. So it's all good. So we can get on now and start putting things back together. Okay, so we've put the motherboard back in the chassis. We've given it a real good clean and we've made some real good improvements already. Now, as you can see, the board's in, and we've used actually black screws in the board just so they sort of blend into the background so they don't catch your eye. So, black screws in there to hold it all in. I'm still not too sure about the Cooler Master, power, uh, the Cooler Master cooler, whether or not that needs a coat of paint, but we'll see what it's like when we finish the build. That may still happen. And also, you probably notice, well, you probably don't notice actually, because it's changed it immediately put all black screws into this side panel so we haven't got these big bulky silver thumb screw type connect uh, type screws in there now so that looks a lot more plain or less eye-catching so you concentrate on what's actually going on in here so the board's in it's all nice and clean and we're starting to do some cable management now so let's carry on <laughs> So that's the uh, the front I.O. connected up. So we've got a hard drive, HD audio, USB 2, and we've also got our reset and power connectors. So it's looking a bit tidier already. Okay, so that's it. We've uh, we finished the project. So just to give you a brief run through of what we've done, we've taken a USB 3 card reader and attached that on the front. 
to give front-mounted I.O. for a USB 3, which isn't native on the Antec case. We've changed all the fronts, cleaned them up, all nice and clean, taken out the filters, given them a good scrub. Everything is basically as it was brand new. We've given the entire case and side panels and the acrylics a polish with a bit of Pro Shine, which actually is really good for getting the scratches and the dirt out. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description actually. Pro Shine, it's fantastic stuff. It's supposed to be for cars, but it works on everything. It's fantastic. Anyway, I'm digressing. So the rear panel we've taken off and given a light sand and a coat of paint. That's looking much better than it did. Uh, moving around to the rear of the case, we've got rid of that horrible pass-through cable for the USB. And now we've got all matching rear vents on the PCI Express expansion area. So that all looks nice and clean and crisp um, as it would do out of the factory. Now the biggest success I think is the power supply being mounted upside down in the case, which has given a little bit of extra room on the cables so we could wire them through the back of the case, do a nice little bit of cable management and make the whole build look a little bit cleaner on the inside. Uh, and as a byproduct of this, because of the way the PCI Express is now wired through, we can actually use it to uh, make the card more level because it was starting to sag a little bit as they do with age. So we've, uh, we've propped up a little bit and it all looks really nice. Now hidden in this system, there's an OCZ 240 gig SSD, which is just underneath the USB card reader. So that's hidden out of sight. Unfortunately, there wasn't anywhere really we could put it prominent so it would actually be visible, which is a shame, but uh, it's hidden away and it works in there. And the wiring is all completely discreet. So all in all, this has been a really worthwhile project. It's cost virtually nothing and has transformed what was a pretty tired looking, nasty chassis into uh, something you could be quite proud of to have next to you at your computer desk. So if you want to find out more and see if this thing actually does sell, you can uh, check out the links below. I'll put a, a link to the Facebook group and you can join, you can see how it does. Uh, but in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And this has been the FX3850 rebuild. Thanks for watching.